Hey, look. Hey, those guys are talking about marble on oh. TV today. Really? <laughs> hey, stupidest, stupidest things we ever did. did. Who wrote this stuff? You did. Oh. Uh, uh. All right, what's with you? Hey, those my marbles. All right, it's not easy to come up with something funny about marble. <laughs> what are you doing, Ed? Well, we're doing marble today, aren't we? Yeah. This is a piece of marble cake. <laughs> Hi, welcome to yet another operation. Oh, aren't we madcap? No, it's furniture to go, and I'm Ed Feldman. And I'm Joe Lorario, and I'm lying on a table here that's badly scarred on the top. Yeah, I think we should strip it and refinish no, it. No, 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 we're gonna paint it, but we're gonna marbleize it, too. Again? Because, well, people have a lot of questions still, so we've got a, a marbleizing project at hand, and what better place to get the marbling supplies than... And an art supply store. An art supply? Supply <laughs> store. So come with us as we browse and purchase, Let's please. Go. You want to get off? Okay. There you go. Whoa! Oh, if there was only a pool like the Matt Helm movies, you know? What are you doing with that? Well, this there? one, this is if you're a hockey player, you could paint, too. Hey, we're here at Taws in Philadelphia, and this is Dove, the owner. How you Hi, doing? Dove. Welcome to you know, Taws, guys. What we're looking for is some art supplies, like we said, and what better place to come to than an art supply store? For barbalizing. Yeah, well, what we, do you have, got back here? we have some interesting brushes. This is a softener. Most of these brushes are used to take paint off or move paint, not to actually apply paint. This is a spalter. A stiffer bristle this than is this what softer. I need. One of these, definitely. Well, you'll have to take that with you. What about and this? That's a pencil overgrainer for uh, doing woodworking. Actually, for simulating wood. So grains. it's got one, two, three, five points. Right. I used to use that on my hair in as, the seventies. As I pick. This uh, fan brush is used uh, also for softening and making texture. Well, Patty, if you want, Patty. if you paint the pictures, you can make some little trees with this. Uh. <laughs> Patty LaBelle in the hair all the time. And then this is a flogger, which is actually used to texture the softener, to soften and texture the uh, That's paint. real nice, too. Ooh. Great. Well, you know Could what else? shaving cream on with this, too. We need some uh, feathers, I think. We need feathers. We and need sponges. some paint. Let's take a look down we'll here. Okay. This way. Let's go over here. Okay, this is where we're headed. I see yeah. feathers. Oh, these are great. These are, what do you call them? Turkey, Turkey feathers. feathers. Right. It's God's and way of uh, blah, 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 punishing blah, blah, blah. them for being so stupid. And, and you separate them. That's yeah. right. You pull them apart like this so you can paint with them. They get little clumps on the edges of them. It looks like a lot of different paintbrushes touching yeah. the surface. And you can drag it over the surface. Got, got, got some nice brushes. selection of brushes. This is uh, a rigger used for dragging out long lines. And this is a grass brush which has an open edge on the end of it. Doesn't fill up the stroke real quick. Very pretty end. brush. I like and that one. And sponges. Yeah, of course, sponges, which uh, you can tear pieces off of. Uh, There's the ocean. That's natural. I have that's the right. sea in my hand. Oh, right? remember Sophia Loren coming out before she hit but on our land? How could you forget? You know what uh, else what I need? Sponges. What's I need? I need paint. Some so paint right over, over here. here. Right. Here's the paint. Right in here. Liquid acrylics. I need uh, white. The white. This is black. No, this is what I want. Raw umber. umber. Mm -hmm. and, and we're going to go for a pinkish. What's real nice about violet, these paints? Violet oxide. That's, oh, that's, a, very that's a pretty color. That's what mm -hmm. I like. And that'll work with our project. Oh, yes, yeah. and they dry glossy, and they're wonderful paints okay, for what you're doing. Need that. Don't you need a Eugene? This is a Eugene palette. A little peel-away paper. peel away disposable. Mm -hmm. And this pan is very nice. That'll sure. wash out nicely, too, when you're done. It's the porcelain pan, but it's good to put go on, your please. water in. You could put your brush in here and then go. And you can put lumpies yeah. in here. Yeah. And I see, Dove, that you got my the special, special order. The order. 64, 96 yeah. with the sharpener. The sharpener. Take and a you smell know, of those. Ah. Uh, oh. Santa has mm. so memory. Miss Elster, my first oh, grade teacher. Sister, sister, Victoria. Oh, she looked Look. like Snow White. Oh, I experienced something for the first time. Well, that come I on. I want to give you a great deal give on these deal, materials. And let's get back yes. to the shop. All okay. right, guys. Okay. Come on, Dove. Well, I'm going to mask off the bottom of the piece because we're not going to marbleize that. That'll get cleaned up later. But I just added a little bit of masking tape right to the edge of a piece of newspaper. Is that and the I'm... ratings? Yeah. How are we doing in France? Oh, great. Great. You wouldn't believe that. Through the ceiling. The gall of those people. And I'm sanding with 120 sandpaper to roughen up the surface to prepare it for the next step, which will be priming right after we clean with naphtha. And naphtha. And yes, we much... are pro-naphtha. It's pretty Actually. much sanded already. 
So we just, uh, let's dust off some of this. That's my rag. Well, that's all right. Okay. Shake out the rag. Just a little bit of nap, so you don't need a lot. Because mm -hmm. a little yeah. goes a long way. And you want to get all the crime. Of the ages. Off of that. So look at that. Oh, look at that those dirt dirty design. rags. Oh. You know, this was a library table. So who knows? And it's the perfect kind of project for a marbling job because it's got that pretty, those pretty features, the pretty underneath of the table that you can't see now. And the top is so screwed up that to strip and refinish, you'd probably have to resurface. So this is an ideal marbleizing project. The napsa dries instantaneously. And now we get it's ready so nice. to prime. Yes. Remember, always when you're using naphtha or any kind of flammable things, well, keep a bucket of water. We got a guy that kind of takes these off the stage and puts it in there. Yeah, us. But they could spontaneously ignite. Now you apply this quick prime. Yeah, and it is, is a, a quick drying primer. It dries in about a half hour. Oh, and I'm getting hairs in mine. That's because it's a brand new brush. And do all the edges. Why do you prime? Well, for the yep. same reason we always prime. We want a white surface on which to lay the magic. Your palette. Well, we've sanded and we've tack ragged. You yeah. look like Cleopatra. And now we're going to do the actual marbling. And we've got three colors here that we're going to use because we're going to do a light rose sienna. This is a light rose. This is a My light, aunt. kind of like a salmon. Salmon. And this is kind of a brick red. And we're using latex paint, too, because it's going to dry fast, and then we'll top coat it with an acrylic poly. We're doing it for you, for, for you, the you, viewer. Because you've asked about all of these water-based products. Now, the lightest color is going to be laid down first, because then the grain on top will be the darker. So I'm going to take a brush here. Yeah, and I, see, look, I have a palette that you can remove uh, sheets as they get dirty, and you know, this is good for, you really get your thumb really good in every corner. <laughs> <laughs> and the tray back here, I got some water. Water. This is latex paint. So instead of using paint thinner, we use a little bit of water and we apply the acrylic just like this. Here, you want hey, some? Sure. Wet your brush. First. I did. Oh, I didn't. Yeah. This is okay. kind of instruction. Yeah, like you're teaching. Yeah, come on. Do that. Come on. And just put this on here. And that's all there is to it. See ya. Are you using the same paintbrush to do oh, the darker color? Oh, yeah, of color? course. Oh, really? Because it's like Artemis. This is, there's no kind of rule to this. Okay. Now, the, the sponge is for doing the foundation. And you dipped it in the water, didn't for you? For modeling, exactly. Because this will spread it around. Not too much water there now, Chief. Okay. And remember, random. Nature is random. Yeah, just look at us, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we say. Oh, we're all modeled yeah. here. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Excuse me. We're modeled. Shrimp cell. And now we're going to put a little bit of porphyry kind of on it. Isn't, this this little, has some religious significance. Yeah, it's like the, the priest. Amine pactum. Letters to him, the altar boy. You know, I was going to call the pope the other day. I forgot pactum the phone number. spirit to to o. So you get this, you get your, all your little speckles in there yes because you're picking up the white now you have this huge brush see this this is a flogging brush see the, the hairs are very very long flogging and long. this is for watch this on here see this it's for feathering it's a fluttering hey we're ready to have some fun with feathers when in the course of human events it's <laughs> this, jefferson's crib notes one of the turkey feathers that we purchased and you spread the plumage like this and you're ready to use it for graining. We like to keep these feathers in our pants for a giddy artistic attitude before we use them to grain. I got some water in this tray and I'm going to run this feather through the tray. Palette looks good. Doesn't it? And now we want to... Ooh, let me do that. Hold on. You, you push and you pull. Oh yeah. He pushes and he pulls. Let's go the whole length. Whole length, whole length. There you go. There you go. I'll start from over here. Oh, that looks nice. This is the general idea. And continue over the edge. Now you just have to like continue that. with all of your colors because it's not something that you get in one 
fell swoop, as they say. The good part is when you don't like something that you've done, you just take the big brush. You take the, and you model. What's now that? Now for some brushing. Listen, fish. Yeah. See, the little, br oh, little brushes, the little Look points. Look how we watch it, does it, just like an artist. Now you, this is a little of the umber. Get that wet. Little of the white. And we'll go right across here. And, and uh, make a happy grain. A, oh, a this little, is a little happy brush. A little happy brush and happy marble and happy grain. Now go to the spatter, I, I sir. I want to get a little more spattering in there just as a top uh, effect. So I want some white, a little more white. A little more gauze. And two hard boiled eggs. Yeah, let's do this. Oh, boy. And it's going in my hair, too. Yeah, you better move out of the way, son. So we've spattered. We've laid on a lot of grain. And now we're going to go with the poly top coat, the when first we, poly. When this dries. Which say, is going to be about in a minute. Well, I don't know. We're going to lay on a poly coat. OK. Acrylic. Applying the water-based poly, that is going to put a coat over the first amount of graining and modeling. Why? Because we're going to do more graining and modeling. And if we did that on top of this graining and modeling without a barrier, it would start to affect this and pull all this up. So we want, in effect, a new canvas to work on. Now, if you use a regular oil-based poly, like a, a spar varnish or something, you could do that. The only thing is it'll turn yellow because they are amber varnishes. And we're applying this with the foam brush with the plastic handle. This is clear. It's a milky in the can, but it dries. And you have to work quickly with this because it will dry very quickly. Hey, the first coat of poly is now dry, so we can lay on more grains. More graining. So I'm basically going to do the same thing, but in a lighter way. I'm going to do some modeling, and we'll do, see this? This is kind of like a spray paint can, but it's a jar that I put some of the acrylic poly into and a little bit of water, and I add a little bit of color to it. Uh, and what this does is it'll make a glaze. Not for your donuts, though. No? But for your paint, for your effect. Now watch. See, what the glaze will do is it will create depth, just like real marble. We've just done. Just like this yeah, show. Yeah, right, lots of depth. Yeah, we, we stink, but this table's up for a Cable Ace Award. You'll now see look, it there. Watch. It'll have a tuxedo and a little tie. Oh, can... that's enough to kill any lung. Now you can spray this on here. Oh, look, see, I'm spraying this on here, like that there. And it's falling like rain. And it could give you just a little bit more added color. We're going to give the marble more depth with more graining well, coming put, up immediately. Put a few more highlights in here. Guess what? A quick coat of poly. Yes. After all the glazing is done, we want to put on a final coat. I will sing you to sleep after the glazing. You know, I actually hate that guy. Engelbert? Engelbuck Humpy Bump. Uberdink. Whatever. I am a Tom Jones man. What's new, pussycat? Remember Jerry Garcia and Ho Chi Minh? And the Ho Chi Minh at that time. Yeah, he used to have a beard like that. There's things you can do with steel wool. Mm -hmm. We're going to rub out the acrylic poly with some steel wool. Wait, I'm not finished. OK. <laughs> and a little bit of water. Hey, wait a minute. And we're going to rub. Now, while he does that. Try and eradicate the brush strokes. I'll dip in. Let me just get in front of you. And with this little padette, I'll do the front and all the little molded edges. Why don't you do this edge? Why don't I do that edge? Yeah. 
just like we choreographed. Champion of Gower tribe, Gower champion. I see you're doing long strokes in there. Long, even. I'll get down here so I don't get hit. Wide stance, almost like the relay. Now, I like the black tape brand of, of car buffing polish. And we wet the lovely circular yellow foam applicator not it's all it's good for furniture too not just for cars right actually it's better for furniture and we just spread it around spread it around all over in a circular motion and then you let it haze jonathan do those edges do those edges and then we come over to this side it's already been done because they'd work from here all the way to there. Yeah, but I didn't get the edges yet. Yeah, I got the edges. You got the edges? Yeah, I got the edges. All right. And then Did you we'll... get the back edges? Yeah. And, then we'll just and now with a circular motion with the paper towel. You buff. Oh, do you buff hard? Wait, you'll feel it. You'll feel cut your window. It sticks on the wax. Right, right. and then the more you do it, the it uh, less it'll cut, move. and eventually you'll glide off. And that's when you know you've buffed off all the wax. The top is done, and but now... But look at the bottom. We've given absolutely no attention to the bottom. It's been taped all along, but, you know, when you have a piece like this, all you have to do is revitalize it or, you know, make it, make it look nice or clean it or up. Or carry it over to a second show, which we're not going to do. So you take a little bit of lemon oil on a brush. Dark lemon oil. We like the it's very the dark, brand. dark stained brand. And you... And you mess up the table uh, first. You put it on and here. And then you dab in. It's good to use a brush because of all the turnings and all the grooves. This is the brush I use specifically for lemon earls. And I will follow over just getting the excess. Why don't you show them that touch up and I'll get it. Oh this. my God, look, the fabulous Lee Van Cleef. Good uh, for a few dollars more touch up brand. It costs a few dollars more yes. too, but it's worth it. And I'm using two. Now for touch ups up here, so you've got some worn spots there and there. I'll use the dark walnut, which will and you always follow with the hand or the rag. And that's lovely. And then one. Lovely. Three. And then I'm going to do a line here. Now this groove is many edges are always worn. For this, I'll use one step darker. Why? Because that edge is going to catch more light. So it will look Lovely. That will you stop already? Well, it looks good. And then you just rub it down, following that. Since the, the edge catches more light, you've got to go one step darker so it looks just as dark as everything else. It gives it a lovely pinstriping effect. And then I'll do 18,000 other more touch ups. That's what I call reviving a finish. <laughs> Letters. Oh, we get lots of them, and we'll get back to the table in a moment. But first, a letter some fan mail. A letter from Diane Noonan from uh, Rhode Island. And she wants to know, you were using a homemade paste of lye and something else. What is it? And you also used chips to scrape off the old varnish from the dresser. What were those chips called, and where can I get some? Well, the chips are planer chips. They come from when uh, you can go to a lumber yard that's in your area that surfaces boards. Uh, they'll have a lot of these planer chips. When they run the board through the planer chip, makes these little chips. You can buy some from them. Uh, or, or they'll give you some. Or if they've seen our show, they'll try and sell them to you. Uh, as far Steal as the, them. As far as the lye goes into the lye, we had three quarts of hot water. We put in a 12-ounce can of lye, mixed it up. We have a respirator when you do that. And then we added a cup of cold water into which we put about four tablespoons of cornstarch. You can use wheat paste, too. Emulsify that, throw it into the mixture, and you thicken it just like you're making gravy. Oh, be very careful. Wear goggles and old clothes. Recipes will be in the book. Ed and Joe, please help. This is from Je Jennifer Cotting. I am trying to restore my old dresser. Been in my family for many years. The marble top has some chips, scratches, and stains. Has chips and no uh, pretzels. Yes, and they're making me thirsty. Can you recommend anything to clean the marble, fill in the chips, or provide a protective coating? 
the clean marble, you can use uh, Clorox, or that's a bleach. That will brighten uh, it. We don't get a penny for saying that, not a cent. Uh, you can also use uh, a steel wool, a little sandpaper for chips. Uh, you have to take the piece of marble, especially if it's an interesting color, down to a marble yard. They'll grind up some of their marble into a fill for you. And to buff to a high gloss, always use beeswax. Beeswax. With, with a buffing machine. Lambs will bonnet. That's what they use. And now, the fawning letter of the week goes to Marsha Brunkow from uh, Minnesota. Lake City. Hi, Marsha. And great letter. She writes, Dearest Wacky Furniture Guys, Ed and Joe. Whoa, ho, ho. I don't know why, but I think your show is the funniest darn show on TV. I'm a little 16-year-old girl who has no interest whatsoever in furniture, but like I said, when I watch you wacky kids on TV, it brings tears to my eyes from laughing so hard. Duh. And no, I'm not actually, actually not on drugs. Good for you, Marsha. You guys have a big, nice old glossy 8x10 you can send me, an yeah. autograph too. Yes, we do. We're going to send it to you. Thank you. I know it's been a while since you sent the letter. Thank you for the Kool-Aid, Marsha. Thank you for the letter. Thank you all. And now let's get back to the table. Send us more letters, though, first, because I don't want to get up. And now for a final buffing. We're using a sheep, but we've removed the head, the tail, and, and the, the legs. <laughs> All right, you got a better joke? Send it to us. Furniture guys, care furniture to go. First prize wins a t-shirt. Honest to goodness. Okay. Hey, that's enough. Look at this fabulous before and after. Take a look. Before, after. Ha <laughs> ha, very regal, very regal. Stop, you're making dust all over. Okay, it's so nice and soft. So until next time. I'm Joe Lorario. And I'm this one. Be nice to, to your, your furniture. furniture.